Welcome back Welcome to the Tower to Cast Podcast, the uh, towering podcast for the towering filmmaker of El Paso and the world. We have a, a very special episode today, but before I introduce our awesome guest, uh, I got to introduce my fellow co host as per usual. I'm your humble film servant, Carlos de la Torre, offering a uh, writing directing perspective. And then we have Mr. John Eric Castro. It's John Eric Castro giving you the actor's perspective, you know, giving him the the questions that most people want. <laughs> giving him the look. He right? does have the best questions. Yeah. I gotta admit. And then we have Mr. Michael Delao, making sure we're uh we're we're looking good because you were about these to say sounding no, 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 on the no. ones and twos. But you? you do make sure that we look good on these. Cameras. I make sure we look these good. Are Every episode but why? That's off. Tell us why, Delao. Tell us fault. why. Wait, what do you mean? Because you give us the cinematography perspective. You're cinematography perspective. Back at it again. Excited to it wasn't have there. a guest. We haven't done a we tower done cast in, in, in a while. In, yeah, we haven't done a tower cast since Elizabeth Avellan, I think, when she was in town. And <laughs> we, there, yeah. But we've mm-hmm. been busy, man. We've been doing awesome things. This this man that we're going to introduce uh, is is part of the reason why we've been really busy, but we'll explain that later. Uh, we have Mr. Austin Young making sure we're sounding good on the ones and twos. He doesn't have a camera on him today. He doesn't have a camera on him. I'm sorry, Austin. I don't need one. Damn it. Well, to be fair, he doesn't have a microphone either because we have, <laughs> we have well, yeah, we have but that's, he's got cam audio, so it's all good. Hi, Austin. Say hi, say hi loudly so they can hear you. Hi. Wow. Good job. Good, <laughs> good job. Last, but certainly not least, uh, we have, we have a really cool perspective today because yes. we talk about writing. We talk about directing all the time. We talk about acting and cinematography and everything that could, but the, yes. like some of the true unsung heroes, I preach this on this podcast a lot because of how great I am for my producer, Austin. In all of the films that we've done, a, a producer is so essential, and, and they're the unsung Absolutely. heroes. They truly are. Uh, and, and this man has, has been an executive producer, a line producer, a co-producer, a producer, uh, just done it all. And we're, I'm excited to hear just about all of the work that he's done. Um, he's worked with all, all types of companies. He's worked with A24. He's worked with uh, with Amazon. He's, he's worked yeah. with, with everybody. Um, and, and he's very knowledgeable. And we're very grateful to have him on the podcast. Mr. Javier Gonzalez. Thank you, guys. Happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I think the no, you're no, good. Okay. So, man, what we're happy to have you. So, oh, so okay. we know uh, uh, the big the big reason we met is because you you just moved to El Paso and you're from Juarez originally. I know that, but this like you 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 didn't skip a beat, man. You hit the ground running when you got here. We learned that very fast because we're uh, can't say much, but we're working on something together that uh, is doing really well. I mean, it's gonna be very exciting. I were, we were already working with Javier. We see his work ethic. We see what you bring to the table. It's awesome, man. So, thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Happy to hear. be here, boys. You went from Mexico straight to over here in El Paso, or did you move? He was no, no, no. I was living. I lived in New York for fifteen years. Right, that's right. I was working in production there. Yeah, so back to El Paso. Yeah, no, we moved back here during COVID. You we think, uh, you were in an apartment in Brooklyn with a four and two year old, so we got <laughs> oh, the hell out of there in a yeah. car. Yeah, with COVID, tiny spaces. Just yeah, being I remember cramped. when I when I walked to my car to when literally when I went to get it at the parking lot to leave. On a Friday afternoon, yeah. when I was walking to the parking lot, it was like a scene out of that Danny Boyle movie, the one, the the sci-fi movie. What's oh, yeah. it called? Uh, the one where everybody with a he shot London. Who knows how much uh, money he had to make? Twenty-eight pay, weeks. Yes, or twenty-eight years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like the I Am Legend version <laughs> of London, where there's nobody on the streets. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and I remember I walked by a couple townhouses where people had left yeah. the doors open because so it was wow. just the, it was peak hysteria. It's crazy because COVID hit New York first. Give me perspective yeah, yeah. on this too, because you obviously you fly yeah. all over the place. Recently, told me we're in was it Columbia shooting a picture? Yeah, for with James Franco. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, well, the we'll, great James Franco. Yeah, yeah. Love James Franco. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that because that's that's not out yet. But we'll talk about. He's the best. I love that. Um, but um. You've been all over, and 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 it's. I think it's a great perspective for filmmakers to know. That, you know, obviously this this film caters to storytellers, young and old, new, yeah. been in, in the industry for years. Uh, doesn't matter. So, like, give me perspective on this because I've been preaching this a lot since we've been exposed to it a little more. L.A. and New York are not necessarily the hot spots anymore in terms of being based out of one of these two cities. You could really be based out of anywhere, right? I mean, yeah, I think. The, I mean, the world changed. Even it, it was starting before COVID, and now mm-hmm. the. Because I think everybody, I think everything, if you look at physical production and in terms of production hubs yeah, yeah. everywhere in the world, in the U.S., once New Orleans and Atlanta and Albuquerque yeah. started yeah. heating up because of the tax incentive, mm-hmm. yeah. then that it's ever, the same thing happened everywhere. First, they would bring in people from the coast, but at some point, yeah. you know, there was the local talent starts evolving and then... And then so they, you get a local crew talent base. <laughs> and then at some point, people don't care if you're L.A. or New York based anymore. And then COVID hit. 
and then it really doesn't matter, you yeah. know, because I then like that, yeah. then you can then you can work remotely as long as you can, and then move there. And then what's happening? I think everywhere, especially in the U.S., is now you saw the New York New, the New York State Governor mm. they had they had lowered the tax incentive to twenty five percent, but New, and then New Jersey raised its to thirty yes. percent, mm. and New Jersey included above the line. New Mexico's at thirty five right now. In some it? places, yes. okay, Ooh. yeah, not yeah. not everywhere, right? But uh, but yeah, I mean New Mexico's pretty crazy competitive. <laughs> but point being is that the the New York State Governor had to raise. The New York, uh, or proposed to raise it. I think it still has to be they approved in Albany yeah. to thirty because New Jersey is getting so much business. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. So yeah. now, and, and I'm sure you know. I don't know. It'll be Idaho or somewhere else. And uh, no wonder you'll, Kevin you'll Smith the, has been going back home to shoot shit. Yeah, you'll keep it. Right oh yeah, New Jersey's <laughs> phenomenal because and New Jersey's New Jersey is is similar to. Uh, New Mexico and Georgia, and then it includes above the line. Oh, New wow. York was 30, and it didn't include above the line. Shit. They lowered it to 25, yeah. so every, everything moved to Jersey. Yeah. You know? These and are then, the types of things, by the way, a producer keeps his eye on because it saves money. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. That's, that's a big it's oversight, a big, right? It's a big oversight yeah. that people don't pay and, attention to. And it's just – and I think that all the, – the, the bigger point is that that all leads to – to production becoming less focused, less uh, concentrated mm -hmm. on the coasts. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm sure in, in two or three years, Idaho or some state, yeah. because the way they, I mean, I'm obviously, as the French would say, I ain't no banker, but <laughs> but the, they, they find a state has to find out, it's usually states that have, they know they have positive cash flow coming yeah. either through like New Mexico, marijuana sales or God mm -hmm. knows what. Yeah. So if a state knows that it will have a surplus in the next five years, then they know because you have to, you know, you also can't, you can't offer a tax incentive and then yeah. have a million productions come and not pay them. You yeah. Know, that, yeah. Then no, you have a problem. Most states have a cap. I mean, most states have yeah, a cap. Yeah, but, right? but so. the great thing, but the great thing, New Mexico's cap is insanely high yeah. as is Georgia's. Yeah. So they're well managed. There's many, it's it's a competition. Yeah. So yeah. so at some point, Idaho or, or I don't know, it's whatever, the film gods don't even know. Some state <laughs> will come up and. So what's going on in Texas? The they're having incentives. a meeting. The tax, yeah. is a yeah. the tax incentive is a disaster in Texas, yeah. and I don't have to say that. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, no, that's true. That's, it is. The fact that like, how bad though? Like, is it ten? Mm -hmm. No, it's very it's, bad. It's, it, it, it's, it's a disaster. It's twenty percent, and the cap is stupid low. Like, you can't. Yeah. I mean, the fact everybody a, a million. There's so many Hollywood types yeah. that tried forever to shoot series and movies in Austin before Austin was cool twenty yeah, years yeah, yeah. ago right, right, right. because they really liked living there. And but Texas just couldn't. At some point, you can't justify it to the studio or to yeah, the financier yeah. if Albuquerque's giving you you know more than thirty percent. Yeah, the money you guys. So it all it, everything moved there. Every, yeah. like, Austin is dead now. Yeah, yeah no, Texas for production. Is, is problematic. Because after the new lizard, whatever, aren't they based Broken on lizard? Broken lizard? Uh, I don't know. I, I think, think they're just not based on LA, no? Maybe. But, uh, but I mean, yeah. either, but again, they can, no, anybody can be based out of anywhere and you just go and shoot. I no, mean, most yeah, people, yeah. a lot of people shoot in Vancouver, a lot of shoot, like even out of the country, people yeah. are shooting in Ireland because it's cheaper. They're shooting in, they're, they're shooting Ireland for LA. I'm not even Coca joking. Well, cocaine bear cocaine was bear. shot in Ireland. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's right. Oh, cocaine bear was shot in Ireland. Yeah, they fake Kentucky or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that's crazy. So that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. so um, by the way, we saw it. You get to see it. Yeah, yeah, we saw it. Yeah, else. I um, mean, it doesn't look like it'd be hard. Just find a nice forest, put up a couple whatever. of signs. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. impressed with the cast, to be honest with you. But whatever, beyond she's that, a, she's a good director. She, she's yeah. Directing she's, that movie is not easy. No, That's a hard yeah, movie yeah. to pull in. I, I've yeah. been saying, keep an eye on Elizabeth Banks. She's 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 getting good. I just don't know. I I can't put my finger on her her choices as a director yet uh, uh, in terms well, of what you know, film she's choosing. Well, she's right probably, now. she'll probably lean into comedy horror yeah, after yeah, this. Because yeah. no, it's clearly, sure. it's, it's, she, she did good. She did it very she well. Did good. And then she worked with the late Ray. Yeah, uh, Ray Liotta, man. That was his last picture. And his last, yeah, his last time on screen. Yeah. God, rest in I wonder how they shot that, like, did they know that he was suffering from something? Nobody so they knew. To, like, it was kind of sudden. Real quick. It was kind of sudden. Like, the, nobody knew they he was suffering. Anecdotally of, 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 uh, I mean, he's not my friend, but a, an acquaintance of mine, a production friend. Right. He was on the movie where Leota moved on in the Dominican. <gasps> oh, that's right. He died during yeah, production that, for that, that one. That movie, I, 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 I don't know, mm. but I, to my knowledge, I think it had to shut down because he was one of right. the leads. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's right. crazy. Because that's 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 I think it was an indie movie and you yeah. can't, you don't have money to reshoot a scene. So it just, yeah. they just, they just kind of, yeah. I wonder if they could still do something with it. Like, yeah. If they probably, I mean, shot, I, like, know, we're probably we'll probably just see like a doc and it'll be like yeah. one of those, like, uh, who did that with Orson Well, the unfortunate, no, well, yes, yeah, the unproduced films, but I know that even for, through tragedies, like, uh, um, then the Rust tragedy, you know, that should, they're shooting a, like a companion doc for for trying to finish up oh, the film. Really? Yeah, they're actually shooting. And then the another Rust. one with uh, the documentary. Oh, and then 
anecdotally, sorry to interrupt. No, I'm good. Coppola, because you know the, in my opinion, the best Army think, of Darkness. Or yes, Heart of the Darkness. best documentary about yeah. show business period Heart of made by Eleanor Coppola, Francis Ford Coppola's mm. wife. I don't know. I don't know. Coppola. I think it was mentioned in one of the articles a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a great director is is shooting the behind the scenes talk right, of Mel- right. Megalopolis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember uh, yeah, the Megalopolis name, but an ex- it was an excellent. Uh, not a documentarian. I think more of a narrative director. Yeah. Okay. But when I, you- I heard that they're trying to do what they did for the offer. But like narratively, tell the even the shooting of the documentary, like the actual shooting of the film. For I'm Apocalypse sure that'd now. be great. That'd so, be excellent. Yeah. And they and they released so many versions. They just released another version of Apocalypse Now, oh, like another great. extended cut. Yeah, really? some, some, like 40th anniversary edition or something. But is uh, it longer than the four hour yeah. director's cut? Yeah, the the what is it called? Do uh, do or something like that? Um, I love the director's yeah, cut. Yeah, Cop- Coppola is it's amazing. He's obsessed with that picture. Around, but, yeah. I mean, but he had Brando. He had dude. Yeah, that film was fucking all star. Uh, I I heard uh, something about. De- or I read a Dennis Hopper thing. I was watching Easy Writer, and I got into a Dennis Hopper kind of kick. And and he talks about like working on that set. Like it was the best thing ever, man. Like they lived in the jungle while they were actors. were I living in the that. fucking jungle. Like the Tropic just, Thunder. Like, the, either one. Either <laughs> one. But uh, then at the same time, he had he had to uh, part of. Storaro's deal, the DP, was that they had to fly oh, in fresh yeah. pasta every day. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. so Coppola. You yeah. Know? yeah. yeah. Like but it's the it's, circus. It's it's after, nice. Yeah. After <laughs> after the, the, the heat of, of, of The Godfather and then The Godfather 2 wins Oscars. So, like, yeah. dude, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. that, that like, turned him off to, to making more films more consecutively. Like, he was done after that production. Yeah. It took and him you, know where, you know where Hopper's buried, right? No. In Taos, New Mexico. Oh no way! Yeah. Oh wow! He had, a, he, had a, he had a ranch there. So he's oh, buried in cool. the Tao Cemetery. You can go to his grave. <laughs> that's oh, wow! You have to make a trip. That's where he shot Hopper, the last man. movie. Oh, oh okay. that's where he shot the movie right that he directed after Easy Rider, which is a complete catastrophe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which I think it took him three years to finish. And it's yeah, actually. Dennis Hopper's. I he's love a legend, Hopper. Man. If, if you haven't read a. Uh, Easy Riders Raging Bulls. Of course, yeah. yeah. Terrific book. Uh, talks about just like literally that. My favorite era of cinema, which is the 60s and 70s. And, and just talks about how these dudes revolutionized cinema. And Dennis Hopper was one and of you, them. So and you know he's one of the individuals, if not the, who's who's photographed the, the, the most Vogue covers. No way. Oh, yeah, because I think his, his daughter okay. became a fashion editor. Okay. And he was always he was always into stills photography. Wow. No, so he, in, in his lean years, you know, when, when Hollywood turned its back on him, right, on the right. genius. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's what he did. Oh, and he was always kind of this underground, hated the studio system kind of He's guy. Amazing. Him, Peter Bogdanovich, like all these dudes were just. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I love about the Coppolas and the Scorseses. They like, yeah. they would do a studio picture here and there, but they, they loved working outside the system. And, and they had the films that you knew were theirs. They They're forced the like studio's hand to be more artistic again you know like they really did so it's just, well, but that's a whole nother podcast that's uh, great Javier the, we always kick the, the the podcast off with our guest with one question and, and that's how did your storytelling uh, journey begin well I was always into I mean I always loved my I think with the the love of storytelling began more with books I've okay. always been been very books and then at some point I started liking movies more and more and and I went to, in, in Mexico, you go straight to grad school. Oh, so okay. you don't go to undergrad, it's their five-year programs. Straight to grad. And I went to law school and then after year one or two, this was just hell. Right. And then I was getting more and more into movies. Mm. And I was growing up in, in the region, I was born in El Paso, so I had an American passport. Yeah. And then towards the end, I always like, I, I realized that to be a PA, you just need to be legal and to have a driver's license. <laughs> yeah. and, and then you move to New York so, or LA. And then sure, you have to, you know, network. And, but, you know, PAs are basically, you're a driver. You know, yeah, you're a, yeah. you know, I could say many things that aren't PC, but, you know, you don't, you really don't, you don't, you don't even need to know to read. To right. you, if you have a driver's license, you yeah. can, you can get hired as a PA. If you can find smoking. the closest Back, place to get like food and folding yeah, tables. Like, you you literally great. don't, don't even need to know how to read. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, and you know, and obviously you have to show up on time and not drunk. Right, right. They don't care if they don't care if you're high. You, you have to be high. a decent person. Um, well, so. but be- before your your move to New York, though, I want to ask because I know that in that in that same era, kind of, uh, we have Mexican cinema not definitely not at its best, past its golden age years, but. You have these indie guys starting to bubble up, like Guaron and like uh, Del Toro. Like they're starting to make productions that are getting attention, right? So especially in the what eighties, nineties, so they they're, they're picking up. But that wasn't desirable to you to go for the Mexican cinema front as opposed to like no, because when I when I lived in Mexico, it uh, 
the boom, I mean, because it, it, it had <clears throat> Amores Perros, it happened. Right. But Amor, Amores Perros was a privately financed movie. Okay. The Mexican film incentive hadn't, didn't exist yet and hadn't right. kicked in. And okay. there wasn't that big of an industry. Okay. And right. I also, and I also always wanted to try to give it a go in the U.S. Right. And, and the Amores Perros was, was the last one. Like, Iñarito is the youngest of the three. Yeah. So. Cuarón and Del Toro, their breakout Mexican movies, it happened in the 90s. Yeah. And they were already in the U.S. Right, right. So it was, yeah, I mean, of course, it was, it was a clear a, choice. It was a big influence. But then I, I just, yeah, and I just always wanted to see, you know, g give it a try. And then I, you know, then I, then I moved to New York and started working as a PA. You, and, you, and we had you on the radio here. show on, on KTEP. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I want to point this out because I, 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 I didn't, we, didn't, we were on there for like 20 minutes. We didn't have enough time to talk about it. And I didn't even ask you off air because I'm like, I, I want to hear this on the podcast. But you talked about being a PA for literally, literally one of my top 10 favorite films of all time, which is Across the Universe. Oh, oh that was, I can talk about that. I, I want, I want you to like, yeah, tell, that tell was, me about I mean, there's so many, it was, so I, the, I did a, this, this summer course at New York Film Academy, Okay. which is kind of a cash grab, like the, I don't know if you saw the Daniels interview, the, the, the Daniels met themselves. The, the at, that, at a New York Film Academy oh, in, wow. in in Boston, okay. um, and they just it's you know it's kind of I don't know it's like uh, it's just this massive you know cash generating <laughs> sell filmmaking to cash people generate. who will pay thousands of dollars. Sure. Right? Yeah. And yeah. my father was kind <laughs> enough to pay for a summer course, wow. so I got there. But I was lucky that I met a French who still he went to my wedding, he's still my friend to this day. His roommate was a producer in New York, mm. so I to, I told I told this guy I said. And, and that's what the, that was the thing with Film Academy New York back then. It was all usually foreign people that couldn't work in the U.S. Oh, but okay, I told okay. this guy and then we met him and I said, oh, this guy's a producer. So I said, hey, man, I'd really like to work as whatever. You know, mm -hmm. I'm American. I'm legal. Just pay me to do An whatever. And he introduced me to the production coordinator of Across the Universe. Wow. And then so and, and right before <laughs> then, I can't remember, I finagled my way into this into this into this terrible indie movie in New Jersey that mm -hmm. whose name won't be mentioned. <laughs> where it was all I'll say is that the food was so bad that I lost 15 pounds and, oh, I, was, oh, and I was clocking in at like was. one I was clocking in at like 145 back then. This oh, was dude. almost 20 years ago. Um, so good old days. So I went I, I go so from I go from that to <laughs> across the universe. Oh wow. And okay. this was and it was literally it was the biggest movie in New York. It was it was I think if if I can't remember I'm sure I'll be fact checked but I think it was 50 million total budget okay. but 20 or 25 of it was spent on on music licensing sure yeah, yeah. the Beatles music I mean but still 25 for back the, it what was the budget Marvel's awesome for the right. universe uh, well, well Julie Taymor I saw about behind the scenes uh, the, the feature ad or whatever I I've been in love with that film since literally since I was probably in the eighth grade Javier I, I, seven what. 70.8. 70 70.8. So okay, 70 yeah, mil so and then. That's because they adjusted it after. But like, I think when I was working on it, it was that. But she she was amazing too. Julie Tamer like was so I happy never, to get the full licenses, basically, of the Beatles. But if it's half the budget of the film. Like, but, but it doesn't matter because she yeah. hired, she had a, a Bruno Del Bonel, a rock star DP. Yeah. The guy that shot all of all the arts movie. And um, what's his name? The, the guy that. What's the gentleman's name? She was on Frida too? Then? No, that was Rodrigo Prieto. Oh, yeah. Um, well, it's the wow. gentleman's name that directed Delicatessen. Great French director. <sighs> Bruno shot that too. Okay. So so anyway, like for example, you would, it was, it was insane because you would walk around and then back then there wasn't social media, right? Sure, so sure, sure. everybody was normal. So you'd literally <laughs> got, you'd get to sit, you'd walk in, Evan Rachel Wood, which is the nicest person in the I love world. Her. Yeah. She's the loveliest, nicest, True. most proper, best manners. Because she had been on a set since she was like six years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think her mom was a producer, a script supervisor. And she was the nicest person in the world. So you walk by, hey Evan, hey, what's up? And then <laughs> and then you walk by, and like Bruno Del Bonel is he 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 looked like a fashion model, a guy, uh, the best guy dressed guy on set. Jeff Hansen was a first out. AD. Uh -huh. It's like a hardcore rock star, you know, Hollywood first AD. Mm. But those cool. you know, those kinds of people, they're not, you know, they're not yeah, subtle. Yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah. Were, they were, yeah. And, and he's like running, you know, a five thousand person set. I mean, for a set like yeah. that, you yeah. have to be. I'm it was assuming insane. it was insane. You told the, me you took over like the lower east side. The majority of that, everything that every exterior that you see in that movie uh -huh. is yeah. a real street. Wow. And that's crazy. You know, in yeah. Hollywood New movies, York. Yeah, and was, much yeah. less like Liverpool and New York. Every street was a street. In Liverpool, that's right. So you yeah. went overseas. As I well? couldn't. No, they you wouldn't send the, me. Oh, okay, I, okay, I, okay. I, I tried to. I did I was everything. About to say, I, yeah. did everything I, <laughs> I did everything I could. It didn't work. And then the it was a lot. A lot of very memorable <clears throat> New York characters. And then the production designer Mark Friedberg. If you mm. look him up, Wes Anderson, Joker, yeah. there you go. absolute rock star. Mark Pollard was a graphic designer. Also, Wes Anderson. Um, 
uh, was I going to say uh, the very and also a Scorsese guy, uh, Richard Barada, the UPM okay um, exec, line producer, co-producer, whatever that guy ran. It was just. It was all walk. Even I knew. I mean, I was completely new. Yeah. But I, 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 and obviously, you know, I thought hopefully I will be in a position sure, of power yeah, to be yeah, of where these guys yeah. all. But it was very clear to me that I would never experience that again. You know. So yeah. for me, it was just. You took it all in. It was amazing. It well, was and amazing. you told me that that basically Seriously. you got you were fortunate enough on that set to go to each department and learn from a little yeah, bit from each department. Yeah, well, they department. had, I mean, because it was so, so it's Julie Taymor, right? Yeah. So it's, so it's going to be, by definition, very art department heavy. Sure. Yeah, so absolutely. That, like, you would just have to, if you know, any any film lover, all you had to do was walk through the art department. It yeah. was, yeah. we were in a, I bet, I bet. anybody familiar with New York City, the Jacob Javits Center is on West Side Highway. Okay. And then there, it's uh, 11th Avenue. And then you, there, there used to be a park in pa Panavision, like the Panavision HQ, okay. Worldwide HQ was next to the building. And then the building next door was this, I think it was 10 stories and it was warehouse spaces, mm. but it was all rented out to big budget blog, um, Hollywood movies. How was so it? We that? had like, we had, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, so we yeah. had one floor was production and art. The other floor was all art. The other floor was all wardrobe. Was it Panavision yeah. cameras? Yeah. Lights. And then, and then Pan mean, Panavision was next door. Okay. But it was just, I mean, anyway, for it was... It's it's hard to describe, you know, because well, the, the, when you get the a visual, good like if you, yeah. no, and also just the Julie Taymor thing, it'll yeah. be Julie Taymor. Just watch her movies. If you haven't you know, seen you Titus, don't if them. you haven't yeah. seen uh, Frida, oh, yeah. if you haven't seen dude, like I mean, yeah. most recently she did like the Fifty Shades films, yeah. I think, but yeah. um, but she's she's a phenomenal director she, in the cross she is, Every every actor, yeah. every background actor was dressed. Yeah. You know how expensive yeah, that is? Yeah. Like, well, I was going to ask you. with a thousand extras. I was you know? going to ask you, yeah, yeah, like the marching Every extra was, and, was yeah. fitted and dressed. Wow. You got to see the transition um, of That New was York shot on film, by the way. It was shot on film. Yeah, okay. 35. I mean, that, uh, this is a beautiful picture. Yeah. We're talking That's why it looks so good, you know what artistically I mean? just, Amongst many other things. And uh, Beatles fans, there's not, there's not a Beatles fan who doesn't love that picture. Like, mm -hmm. it's just... it. John Lennon <laughs> would, have, would have loved that film, just yeah. of how artsy it was. John went to yeah. the art college and shit. Like, he would have loved it. But you got to see the transition of New York and how it changed. Was it, it was a period, this film was a period piece, seven, yeah. in, the, in the 60s, right? In the late 60s, uh, Vietnam era. So was there much set dressing that needed to really happen on, on the streets of New York at that time? Because this well, was- Well, I mean, that one, I, you know, I, I entered with a boom, right? Like, that mm -hmm. was the, the big one. But then it's it started slowly petering out. Then this just digital took over. Right. Because you know? right. I, I think the, the digital, the especially in New York, the, the thing that influenced a lot of directors, too. And I, they also didn't have a choice, you know, because yeah. once yeah. once financiers or studios get a taste of a cheaper <laughs> of a cheaper <laughs> way of making it, they, they yeah. won't let you. Like, the for example, I, I, I worked on a... On uh, it's the, the the tragedy of IMDb. I was a PA on Across the oh, Universe wow. and on Rain Over Me, the Adam Sandler oh, movie. Oh, we love that picture. Yeah. We talk about that, that film all the time. But they, but they both they uploaded my name wrong on IMDb, so I'm not credited on it. Oh, but it's, I was wondering. You can't fix I don't it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always wondering. You can't fix yeah, it. Yeah, you can. You email them, but of course yeah, you don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, but any but for Adam Sandler, Evan Rachel Wood. And Sandler are two of the nicest people yeah. I've met in my world, in really? my life period. Yeah. Man. Sandler yeah. Would, would show up to set, he would shake everybody's hand. <sighs> he seems like a nice like person. He, it was, that was, uh, we did, we shot all exteriors in, in New York and all interiors in LA. So I was only oh, in the so stuff. On but Sandler like sent, like, he, gave, he got the crew list. He sent everybody, every name on the crew list got a $200 bottle of champagne delivery. Oh my gosh. Wow. And you're talking, you're like, it, yeah. between two cities, you're talking more than 200 people. Yeah. And this so was, do the math, that's yeah, like 40K. Yeah, yeah, 40. that's, and that's before. And he, that's okay, like, I don't judge other actors for doing that, that costs no, a lot No, 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 yeah. And, and naturally, that's can. before Sandler was making Netflix money. And I know, because I was the, I was the person delivering the, the crap. <laughs> the only thing he asked for in his trailer, the only thing, Adam Sandler, in, 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 two, in 2000, what was it, five, was Diet Coke. Wow. Literally, yeah. I, I heard it. Well, maybe this is a now theme, but he used okay, to. He, he, he always has to have a basketball court on set. Or um, that like one, that. it was impossible. He was right. shooting exterior but New York at night. <laughs> but, <he asked> <laughs> but, yeah. but that's not difficult. That's not expensive. Yeah, no, no, you no, know? No, I hear you. But I, I, I know that that's know, one if, of. If his, I told you yeah. the kind of shit I've had to buy, that's really expensive. You know? <laughs> Can you please like? What's the weirdest thing that somebody rec like? You got to have it once I get there. On for their, example, what, what is it called on their um, writers? On the writers. Well, for example, uh, and it's not. It's, I love and, these. It, and the cliche is actresses, but but actor yeah. men are men are as vain, if not vainer, than, than <laughs> women. Okay. Uh, like for example, many actors insist on full body tans, even though okay. no, but like, but even right? though they're wearing a hat and you only see their eyes. Okay, in the that shot. does not make sense. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and a full body tan wow. in a salon in New York or LA costs not yeah. little. Oh, yeah. wow. So they would so ask that for- That kind of insane shit. Or it, it kind of died down, but many, the not entourages, but for example, the, the assistant <clears throat> situation uh-huh. in the, in the odds was pretty ridiculous, you know, cause you would have to, you would have to bring in the assistant, fly mm. them in, pay oh, them, yeah, yeah. So house them, feed baggage, them. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, I mean, but you never ran into like, and that uh, was in the days before smartphones where you had to give people cell phones uh, and then they would, you know, they would go through their prepaid plan in two minutes. <laughs> yeah. And oh, wow. Just, back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are young. You don't understand no, the world. Yeah, the the, the rollover minutes. No, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you never got the weird only green M&Ms in my dressing room. Nah, that's whatever. bullshit. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> you would say no, no. Nah. At least not on film productions, right? I've heard, I've heard it more from bands. And, and rappers. Yeah, right. Rappers, yeah. The thing that, the thing that is very true is I think in general and 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 I mean now, now it's very different because people social media and everybody and scared. everybody behaves yeah, and exactly. if you if you get some insane request it'll be it'll be from the lawyer or the manager or whatever oh, okay. but back then it's the, more about money right like money demands or sure more. but I just think back back then it was more the the and, and I don't care I'm not from New York like I've, and I've always said that my my children were born in New York but I've never I'm not those people that say oh I'm a New Yorker I right. live there but I also left there you know sure. that's okay, okay. great for me my two kids were born there I fell in love with my wife there but um, i i have i don't care about new york la like it doesn't matter to I me. you don't have like a people, new york back tattoo right <laughs> yeah i mean I, you know, I had a great time there but it's it's a very big thing because new yorkers in la even though they both want to in angelinos even though they both want to live in their res, respective <laughs> yeah, the cities all they do is talk, talk shit about each other <laughs> yeah, 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 i think it's true. a complete waste of time but back then the reality was that especially with actors uh-huh. the new york based ones were much more chill okay what you about know, what oh, about wow. on the well, yeah, uh, yeah. What about behind because the it's not like in LA it's call my agent you know and sure. in New York, New York they they tend to be more theater people yeah more and okay. it's it's less do it yourself type yeah. of people yeah. exactly. what about what about like directors or or maybe even other producers that you had to deal with was there ever anything like that you you had to obviously because like nobody talks especially for the yeah, yeah 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 that type of thing like a director who was super like you know uh, either difficult or had a weird processes that the producers had to deal with beforehand i've yeah i've honestly had i mean i've had i think in the if you you know if i look at it in uh in the when when i have to deal with directors directly yeah mm-hmm. i've had very good experience oh, okay. it's, it's, it's not been difficult and i good. and i'm very for the thing that i have learned that i didn't understand at the beginning mm-hmm. is how hard a job is to act and to direct Okay. And to and to and to direct photography. Mm-hmm. So I've always I've tried to be very understanding, you know, with within certain limits. But but I honestly with with those, you know, I I I haven't had difficulty with Let, that. Let's know? go let's go back there for a minute. So so you 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 start PAing, you start seeing that side of, of, of production, and then naturally you you went to law school. So you 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 have a brain behind you have this this desire to be kind of you know uh, very detail oriented. So. Did you naturally get attracted to producing or did you, you also wanted to do directing that was like, what was, what was it on the producing front? I gotta, no. I gotta, I gotta fit it in. Go. Was there one movie that brought you to the light? Like, okay, this sparked the, the, the or, or one producer or one, one producer. like situation. Like in Deadline, the movie, Deadline, the movie that lit your fuse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, what's the, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what's the one, what's the one that sparked it? No, I think that what, what what definitely a, a buddy of mine, a good friend of mine, in Mexico City, Pedro Choi, he he recommended. He said, "You ever see Tape, the movie that Ethan Hawke directed? Oh, uh, it yeah. it takes place in a, in one hotel room, yeah. and it's Robert Sean Leonard and and Numa Thurman mostly." Um, not Link later, Link later director. Sorry, Link later director. Link later. I told you guys about it. And it's Robert Sean Leonard, Uma Thurman, and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, yeah. and, and I think he's an author. And Ethan Hawk yeah. does it. His, yeah. his part is great. Before, uh, yeah, his part is great. Before. No, that was after they all broke after out. The before, yeah. They oh, shot okay. it. I think Link later paid for it. Or yeah, yeah. It was okay, like a okay. super indie takes place in one but hotel room. That was the first movie that I saw that wasn't some art house jerk off. Uh-huh. Where you <laughs> say, holy shit. Like if you if you have a it's good great script. Picture. We got to screen it. Right? If yeah, you yeah. have a good script and good actors, this can. Because it's basically they, what, what, what they did is is like Lucky is they basically shot a play in mm-hmm. a confined space, mm-hmm. yeah. but they made it interesting with direction and camera angles. Yeah. Yeah. And I had and never seen anything like that. No, I had no, seen, I had seen a bunch of shitty uh, art art house movies, you know, where they yeah. tried to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the only one I said, holy shit, that's possible, you know? So that kind of, you know, I, I mean, I've never, I've never assumed nor, um, 
thought I could pull that off as a producer or whatever, yeah. but yeah. I had never actually seen it done right, mm -hmm. you know? And once I saw that, I said, okay, this is actually a thing, you know, this is feasible. <laughs> yeah. So that really, no, honestly, that was a big, big thing. Cause this Seeing is, tape. you know, cause you, at the end of the day, like if, you can this it's a collaborative medium you know you sure. don't have to do everything you know yeah if, if you're a dp and you find a director you can shoot something if you're a producer and you find mm -hmm. a script you can shoot something it's yeah. a it's all that that's the other thing that i start you need to understand. other collab yeah. i mean the but that's also good though you know yeah. that doesn't it's not it's not a zero-sum game mm -hmm. so that's that's definitely in terms of physical production that was a massive influence. So you, massive you, influence. you see tape and you think, all right, what, or what's your next pursuit after that? Like you're gunning for a producer? No, was the, I, I saw that. No, well, I saw that at towards the end of law school. Okay. Oh, okay. And, I, and I said, okay, this is, I mean, this is either, I, I either, do this either, <laughs> no, well, either you write it or you, or you find a way to buy the script yeah. or, or, or finagle your way onto movies, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then it's, it's, you know, you just try your best and at some time, at some point it works out. Like, for example, I was, the whole time I lived in New York, it's like anybody that was there at the time, I was dying to get on an A24 movie. Dying, uh, dying, dying. Mm -hmm. And I and I and I know a couple of people there. And it when just did that happened. bubble up in New York? When did that bu bubble up? Now, in A24 A24 has been hot for a long time since, yeah. since Spring Breakers. Like they, okay. they exploded. But then it's I moved back here for COVID and all of a sudden I got a um a call, an email from the funny pages director, Owen Klein, and he said, uh, Oscar Boyson recommended you. We're gonna finish this movie. There was a couple of days of production left to go. Are you interested? Wow. <laughs> is, the, is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> and, and, and the script is excellent. It's actually it's featured on that calendar. Yeah, yeah. Over we there. have a an A twenty four calendar up, and I would show oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, "Yo, you remember this?" And and I go, oh, dude, I gotta send it to director and stuff. And you know, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, it's. I mean, I'm sure it's 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 kind of a hallmark greeting card bullshit, but it's also a lot of what Tower does. All, all you can do is work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's and I and I hate regurgitating cliches, mm -hmm. but that's what my that's what my that's what my dad always told me. He said, "All I can do is get up in the morning and work. I can't do anything else." Are, you, are your parents still around? Are yeah, yeah. Still, they're, they're, what do they think about you pursuing this crazy thing? I mean, it must have been very supportive. Good they're very happy. My, I mean, they're they're big cinephiles. Both of them. They're actually <laughs> oh, much bigger lucky. cinephiles than I am. Really? Yeah, yeah. My parents. We would always go to Messia to see obnoxious European Man. art house movies that I didn't like that they did. That's amazing. And they're both of my parents are bigger cinephiles than I am and they're both better read than I am. Wow. So I definitely, you know, it's not a coincidence that what I do. What do they do? Growing. What do they do? My out? dad's a lawyer. Okay. That and, explains and, law school. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And my mom's a, uh, my mom fundraises money for charitable organizations. In wow. Oh. That's beautiful. But, but they're, but they're, but literally I've never, every memory of my mom and my dad, when they were free, when they had free time, when I was a kid, they were either reading a book or, or watching, watching a movie, film. Wow. Know? That's and, amazing. Um, so, like you said that you were able to connect with producers in New York and all that. Did you just connect with enough that you felt like I want to kind of jump into those shoes or did you start seeing other departments that you wanted to get into first? No, well, like I told him back into back to across the universe, like the great thing about uh, the great thing about the across the universe. And I think any musical I didn't, you know, now it's, it makes a lot of sense, but then I have no idea. So shooting a musical is very time consuming, yeah. you know, cause it's, 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 it's incredibly hard. Yeah. yeah. And so you're, there's a lot of times where nothing is happening. Parties, you know? yeah, yeah. And, and, and you have, you know, just mu musicals, the, the balls as a director to, <laughs> to direct a musical, every, any director that attempts that deserves yeah. my utmost respect. Cause yeah. I, I, I saw how difficult it is and how time consuming it is and I'm how much money you need Calm to down, do it. You, no, but you can't like you, unless you own the music rights, mm -hmm. you need uh, a shitload of money to do it. Yeah. You can't do it on the cheap. Like it's no. not, it's not tape. You need, you need big sets, yeah. you need big sets Spectacle. pieces. You need action. You need dollies. All of that costs money. Oh, yeah. So on that, on across the universe, there was, they wouldn't, you know, there was, it was revolution studios, which was That's underfunded right. by Sony, uh, underwritten, sorry not underfunded, very well funded. <laughs> uh, and so by the, uh, my, sorry, I'm, I'm getting that uh, sticking. No, to no, 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 but the point is that there was a lot of sitting around, but uh, because they were setting up a shop, but, you know, but setting up a shop, then you're, you know, you're resetting a 50 foot dolly shot. Yeah. You know, where like Sturgis and Salma Hayek, I met Salma Hayek on that yeah, shoot. It was yeah. completely insane. Like oh, literally man. Uh, five the, months. It was, happiness is a warm gun scene. She yeah. She the played nurse. the nurse. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is what's his name? Eddie Izzard. Just oh, Eddie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what about uh, was it uh, Joe? 
Sturges? No, 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 it's Jim. But uh, Joe, Jim Sturges. Joe Cocker? He was there too. Yeah. I, I wasn't on set that day. Ah, oh, um, dude. I think he did the Washington thing. Square Park scene. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, but anyway, so the point is there's 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 a lot of times there's nothing to do. So I would wander when I was in the office and it's 12 hour shifts. Mm. Yeah. Right? So you like wander up to wardrobe and you're in this cinephile paradise. Yeah. Because you, know, mm-hmm. you walk through, they had a whole, they had a whole block, a New York City block. So it's, I don't know, it's like. Uh, more or less, how, how long is this street. block? Yeah, how this how long is this block? I mean, uh, 300 feet, maybe three to 600. Um, square feet? Or square feet, long? square feet, yeah. From here to the next cross street? Yeah, probably 300 yeah, square feet. Probably, yeah. That's So this was their whole, like the whole floor was a wardrobe. I wanted to film for a reason, have to do math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me too, man. But anyway, so you go up, you wander around, oh, this is what wardrobe yeah, does. Easy. And they were and, super and cool because I know a lot of sets are strict. PAs stay well, in this no, area is, or whatever, right? No, but that was, this was also pre-social media. The world was very innocent back then. You could, yeah. People weren't scared of getting canceled. Or yeah, like, but also, you know, like when you're a PA on those kind of bigger sets, I mean, you're you're given less responsibility in the sense that like departments need to work on like these bigger kind of like shifts like you were mentioning changing out full dolly tracks and all that at least you know with the sets that i've been on the bigger they are the more you just stay back well, and you're just wandering also, and waiting around also they the have theater. fucking 20 pas it's not like an indie where That's you have the thing. two or three yeah, PAs. yeah but it's just overload of pas <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just to not piss people off yeah, yeah. Yeah. not kill anybody and not crash a car yeah. that's all you have to do to keep that job or or with somebody in the car that you're driving around right mm-hmm. like uh, and then so like i'd wa- wander around in an art department and then on set you'd see you'd learn exactly what the the upm does yeah the, like richard barada he was the he was the irishman upm Oh, I worked okay, with okay. that guy. He was well, across the universe. UPM. I mean, the, the, it's funny that you say that because rock star. the reason I ask is, is just on the on the moving components because um, you're right. Digital took over. CGI would start literally. You'd start painting sets just like Parasite, right? You create a set out of half of it is CGI, half of it is practical. But for the Irishman, they redid New York blocks. They redid New York storefronts, just like Tarantino Barada, did in LA. Barada's the guy you hire for that. Okay. He's, the, he's the best physical New York production right. UPM, UPM producer, etc. So and he was the coolest guy. You know, he was because he at some point he also was a PA. Right, so right. it was so just a, a phenomenal. Because when you, yeah, yeah, when you, when you're peeing and PAing Hollywood movies like that, the, the responsibility level is very low, <laughs> yeah. and the jobs are very long. You yeah, know, right. usually on a how non- long were you on that set? For five months. Five months. Ooh. I was one month prep and then five months of the shoot and then they went to Liverpool. Man, and they so they got you on before even production happened. When, yeah, when, when prep was, was starting. Wow. So, and then I, you just realize it's, it's it's a very good, it's a great, because, you know, people, I think it's, it's, it's cliche and it's also trending to say, my film school is whatever, but if for physical production, I do find it hard to believe that there's anything that beats actually working on a movie. Because sure. yeah, then sure. you see, if you want to, like if, if you're more, if you want to direct or production design <laughs> or DP, then it's a different thing. You know, then yeah, you shouldn't yeah. be driving people. But, but for what I was trying to do, it was very helpful. And then I realized, and the other thing, it just makes it, it makes it human. You know, it mm-hmm. becomes, you yeah, know, you, the, the, the barrier. It humanizes. Yeah, the, the Hollywood the barrier thing kind of disappears and you say, okay, like if I, do this and I'm willing to earn this much money and all these are the steps. So, so yeah. that's when I, to answer your question, sorry, it took me 20 minutes. But, uh, <laughs> it, it's it, that, that, that's what, then I realized and I said, okay. And then, and then people explain to you, well, you can do this, you can do that. If you want to be, if you, you know, be on the track to be a studio producer, UPM, you have to do this. Yeah. Did you if just want to go the indie route of advice or little sprints of mentors just by being on <laughs> each set? Or was there like a mentor, a producer that was like, Hey, this is, no, this is I, I, that I, you can kind of go to all the, time. The, the one that I, a couple of people that I, I've had many, many great mentors, the, the, I think for, for producing, like what I do now, the best one was Wendy Feinerman. She okay. produced uh, Forrest Gump and oh Devil Wears Prada, uh, and she produced Devil P.S. I Love You, and I was her driver on P.S. That's I Love right. You, and in fact, on the IMDb, it says you, you were an assistant. You were yeah, an assistant, for but that her. means driver. Mm-hmm. She had she had two assistants, so I drove. Okay, and then the other assistant t- typed out her emails. Okay, but it, it was because she was so busy. So sure, she would sure. literally she was on a call with an agent, uh-huh. and then she would tell the other assistant, the and, and, and like she wouldn't even she would just w- word the email. Yeah. And please, blah, 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 blah. but that was amazing. It was because she was, 
It was right after. It was after Devil Wears Prada. Oh wow! So, so it was she a had big heat. deal. I she mean, this heat. understand this. This woman produced Forrest Gump and Devil Wears Prada, and she, and she optioned both books. Wow, yeah. man! So, so you was, can imagine yeah. what that the financial compensation. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and those are also phenomenal movies. I mean, yeah. those yeah. are those are two movies that everybody in the world has seen. Super yeah, not just that, yeah. but they're also two on on the kind of on the just on both sides. Right? There's a business side and the filmmaking, creative storytelling side. On the on the business side. Those two films are, are, in terms of getting points or residuals, like they're on TV all the time. They still have a lifeline out there. Like they're, they, they still are making money for, yeah. for people. <laughs> if you're in a hotel room in most places in the world and you're flipping through, you're going to see either Point Break, Devil Wars Prada, or Forrest Gump. Yep, <laughs> it's I really agree. hard not to, you know, if you're going Think through the whole list. Stuff. Yeah. Um, but that, it, and, and she, aside, she was amazing, lovely, great. I mean, I love Wendy. She was super nice to Are me. Are you still in touch with her? Like, you still Yeah, I mean, more, more sporadically as the years have yeah. gone by. But what happens is that, for example, um, I'll be on a, on a call or on an email with whomever. And, and it's, a, you know, a, 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 a main, whatever, like a quote unquote big Hollywood player. Uh -huh. Yeah. And said person will say, hey. I saw they worked for Wendy on IMDb, and they always say that. And then you say, "Oh shit!" Like you know, this guy knows her. Yeah. And they, it's it's important, you know, so because that, they that see, alone you know, is a currency yeah, that for gives you, a resource you, yeah. for you to get. Like you know, one of the Revenant thing. producers. I was on a call <laughs> for a movie that I was going to do with his with a with a director, and then in, you know, Pleasant Trees Society says, "Hey man, I saw you. I saw you work for Wendy on PS. I love you." Wow. You know, we, we talked to Brett Ratner, who, whose company financed the film. And, um, and yeah, man, he has, he has stories for days for us. But uh, but The Revenant's one of the most, like, talk about putting a film together. I mean, and Ratner was, Iñárritu's gone on record saying that, that you know, Ratner was his guardian angel on that. Yeah, yeah. He, he got his coverage yeah. approved. Warner's, I mean, it was a big budget film. Yeah, yeah. Chivo shot it. You had big, big budgets. You had the biggest movie star in the world as the lead. I mean, yeah. Dude, and really, and the, and, the, and the most important thing out of many, many important things that I learned from Wendy mm -hmm. is, is how she would talk to agents. Oh. Because you know, okay. I... I she was on the phone the whole time because that's the nature of the profession, you right. know. By the way, I, and I, that was that. That's for producing. That's you know, there is no film school that can buy that. And yeah. I, I've seen Austin and I have seen like Javier at work when it comes to that side of things because Javier. I mean, obviously, he li listen to what he's saying. He's got a tons of experience and knowledge to bring and. He sees like us getting frustrated over this or that on on whatever we're working on, or like, oh man, we got to reschedule this, or we got to wait for this, or we got it's a it's a lot of hurry up and wait yeah. um, for for the answers, right? So as long as you're doing your work, and then you know naturally we're humans, we're like, oh man, all right, this is this happening, and we're freaking out about it. And he'll call me and and Javier check in and be like, dude. Um, I'm not calling to bug you. Are you okay? Like, are you are you good? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're good. And I had a little fresh today. He's like, dude, you guys are doing so good. You have no idea. Like, you're doing really. And he'll keep you calm. Like, you. And a, that's kind of a producer's job is talk to an agent. Is like, no, don't worry. We'll take care of them. We're gonna do this. And we're gonna do that. I mean, you're Shoot, using that that resource a lot, right? Yeah, I mean, you're half psychiatrist. You know? <laughs> right, 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 right. Good way to put it. But you yeah, learned that from Wendy, or at least a portion of that came from Wendy. A lot of things, man. She's just taught how to deal with agents and. And deal with directors. It's right. it was just it's very I don't know, man. It was very I, I've had I have I've have had the great, great privilege of working under great producers. So I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Have you ever had with actors? Do you do work a lot with actors? No, I'm very for the a producer whose name will remain <laughs> nameless, but he gave me great advice. Okay. He said it, when I started working, he said, Listen, man, I, I I can see that you're probably gonna produce and hopefully if you you know if you want to have a future in this but he said actors aren't your friends, <laughs> especially during productions. And I said, yeah. Well, why is that? Yeah, why? And he said, Because actors are paid to lie, and if they want to lie, <laughs> they will lie. And and and, oh, actually, and if actors want to achieve something during production, during production, you have to and and and, and I've kind of taking that to heart and not it's not in a bad way but yeah. more more than that that is i mean that's one part of it but i like to i like to give creative types their space and that includes yeah. the directors right i can yeah. i only <laughs> the only for i i mean actors only, I, i've become good friends with actors but after we wrap after sure. you wear and you can you can ask many actors that i've worked with but i don't i'm not gonna i'm not gonna talk to them about their christmas tree i just <laughs> i just find it completely and i and the other thing that i don't like is it is that I imagine is if I were an actor, I wouldn't like some annoying producer yeah. trying to. I mean, they're working. You're on set. Wow, you're okay. working. You're actually working, and that's like you wait almost like what you experience on the Cross the Universe, right? If somebody like Evan or somebody like Sandler, if they approach you and they're kind of exactly, great, yeah, yeah. but you don't want to pursue something, but and they're working. They're in the and there's space. a lot of actors who have their creative process. Yeah, and if you you know, and, and I've seen again, names <laughs> will remain nameless. <laughs> yeah. Idiot producers who you can tell that the actor is going method. 
and, and the actors in, 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 in their own world. Right. And then some asshole producer walks up and asks what the score of the baseball game yesterday was or whatever, <laughs> you know, or yeah, they're trying to hook them, you know, yeah, yeah. trying to hook them up with some women or they're blah, trying blah, to blah. establish a connection. And, and they, sure. they don't like that. I, yeah. I guarantee you they, they, that they're annoyed by that. That's kind and of more of a, like a, in the terms of personality and, and being personable, a director will get personable with an actor because they have to develop right. a connection and a process, but a producer will develop a relationship with their agent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. No. And the great thing, yeah. That's why every, everybody shits on agents. But the great thing about an agent is that one can talk business with an agent and the actor will never find out right, about it right. unless, the oh, agent, yeah, yeah. unless the agent decides to say that to the actor, right. which the good ones won't, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that I, I've, I've had that conversation they with actors many times. To yeah. I've told them, man, you're not your own agent. There's a reason you're paying somebody 10%. Yeah. Let them have Let the shitty conversations yeah, with me. Let me it. haggle over your whatever with them. You know, the, the whole point of you, of you paying that is that so you don't have to deal with that. Now, Aver, I, I, again, yeah. you, and wait, you, sorry, before no, you no, keep no, going. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing I don't like is I, I don't want to risk a director's creative process with the actor mm -hmm. oh, getting yeah, interrupted wanna... or, or yeah. messed up yeah. because I or somebody else on the producing team decided to try to buddy up to the actors. Well, yeah. so, something to note is, is producers, especially if you're on set, right? Produce, and we'll get into the different types of producing and why they're important and why they matter because you've done all of them. But a producer that's going to be on set. Um, becomes becomes a go-to guy, becomes a guy that's getting shit done on set, right? So um, do you feel like you become very protective of all the different processes? You're gonna go and tell the PAs, hey, don't get close to the director. If you guys have questions, come to me or, you know, you, let, you, you become that kind of Yeah, definitely, barrier, yeah, of course. Right? Yeah, you have to, you have to <laughs> let, it's, it's very difficult. And then and the problem with, especially with lower budget independent filmmaking is that the, I mean, the crews are small, right? Mm -hmm. So, so. Whoever somebody that shouldn't be talking to the director just by the law of numbers, there's ten yeah. people on set, then they can be standing next to the director. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I try to, I definitely tell them, please leave. You know, leave, let them do their thing, and yeah. and if there's there, you should there's there's no reason for for a PA to be talking to the director yeah. about anything. And that's just an example, right? But I mean, the, the 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 a director has to deal with every department, and and hopefully you're doing that in prep more than you're doing it on production right but yeah. uh, but the fact of the matter is once you get into a groove as a director once you get into a groove as an actor you're in that mindset and when when somebody from i don't know you know you don't want to cater or come in and talk to the director and say yeah well, exactly. lunch is, you know, like, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> happened to me all the time oh, really? like, you have some idiot cater like, what is this guy or is? crafty person who wants to Take a selfie with a director. It should actor. be obvious. Yeah. You just want to shoot yourself. Right, right, right. Like, Out of curiosity, that happens all the time. The problem, I've, uh, iPhones have changed a lot. Oh, you know, because back then, for example, like you know, I'm sure now she. I mean, I have no idea. I haven't seen Evan Rachel Wood since Across the Universe, right. but I can imagine her being much more guarded now sure, than back sure. then. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. well, not to mention she's been in the media recently with a bunch yeah. of shit. But but, uh, but you never like everybody. Not about Westworld you know? yeah. and then just yeah, just uh, not not just her. Any every celebrity and any. Anybody who, whether yeah. you're a director, a writer, uh, or an actor, I mean, it, you be, you've become more guarded. Social media has has created yeah, that barrier. Yeah. <laughs> but the law you were gonna ask. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Um, so, you know, people are running into the. I guess people have a trajectory that they're paing for a while. You know, they do school and all that. When did you feel the confidence to break into like producing and just take that leap? It, was there what a was your first pro official producing gig? Like, what this, was this this movie called Bonane, This line producing gig was a tiny movie in Buenos Aires in Argentina okay. where they needed an English Spanish speaking person mm -hmm. no, no it was the first thing it was what was offered to me oh, okay. that's the other thing about in you know indie film and I think filmmaking in general like it's the the it's it's that's what's so different about the corporate and different you know other world where yeah, yeah, yeah. the steps are the you step up once something's off but like i mean something like, like that like yeah, line yeah. producing i mean you know did you feel like oh man i don't know I that's that. gonna be yeah too well, much of a jump. Uh, and to piggyback off that connecting the dots and correct me if i'm wrong here how we just based off our, our, our conversations and stuff you reached what we can probably understand is the is the the ceiling for pa you, you paid enough to know like all right got this right and then it sounds like you did that for studio picture, you did the for indies and then for studio pictures, and then you got to line producing. It was like, all right, back to indie, and then kind of working your way up, because I mean, you've been working on both now, indies and, and studio Yeah, I know, I mean, it's obviously, it's a lot harder to get onto, in a producing capacity, to do yeah. a studio picture right. than it is in the indie world. But it's, no, it's, I mean, I mean, you know, you aspire to it and you put your name out there, you say, I want to do this, but it's very, they're, they're all two to three month gigs, so it's, mm -hmm. 
it's all dependent on what's offered to you. Yeah. Now, now to, to, like based off what you were saying, Dalal, let's kind of tell people because you've experienced all of them. Uh, what does a line producer do? So line producer, you're more in charge of financing, mm -hmm. of finances. It's called line producer because of the line budget. Right. And, uh, and yeah, and then in, in the indie world, when you line produce, you do everything. You usually wind yeah. up line producing, production managing, mm -hmm. producing. Uh, in, in, the, in studio movies, you don't see a line producer credit. It's usually the UPM, mm -hmm. yeah. the production manager. Right. Uh, and then, you know, I mean, I go, I'm always on set. So I go back and forth between producing and that. And the I'm reason I want to clarify that is because I, I seriously hear this all the time in El Paso, all the time. Austin and I, uh, well, I, I won't throw Austin's name just then because oh, just I, I forced him. No, no, <laughs> I, I forced him to like, you don't, you don't understand. I mean, those of us that have seen it know Austin's capabilities as a producer, as an editor, oh, as yeah. everything, right? But oh, yeah. I've I've kind of brought him to like, dude, you're 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 gonna EP this with me, whatever this next project is or whatever. But Austin likes being boots on the ground, I'm producing type of guy, right? He wants to have his hands, yeah. making sure that production's gonna run smoothly, right? Especially for my films, man. Like I can't say that enough. But the reason I bring that up is because left and right, I'll get people from production companies who have been in the industry for a good chunk. They've been on sets, they should know this, uh -huh. but they don't. I get the the oh, you you were the executive producer of that, so you put up money. And that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, that's what I mean. The difference that's in producing. That's a complete misnomer. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But Thank tell you. us a little bit about that because you. you've done all of them. Tell us what you've experienced in what capacity. As a line producer, I did this. As a producer, I did this. As an executive producer, I did this. So tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Even the word title co-producing yeah. is its own thing like to, to note. So yeah. can you like. Yeah. Well, basically, I mean, in, in the indie world, executive producers, they're producers that bring in money. Right. Mm -hmm. And then in, in studio world, it's all kinds of different. It can be actors that get exec producer credits right. or studio execs that get exec, exec, exec producer credits. And then producers in both indie and, and, and big budget Hollywood are the producers that actually make the movie. Right. Sometimes in indies, um, money people get producing credits. Mm -hmm. And then uh, co-producer, you don't see too much in, in bigger right. budget mm -hmm. movies. But in indies, it's a lot of line producing types like mm -hmm. me. Is it when and it's the, co producers? Is it usually like brothers or sisters? No, like, no they have to. Not necessarily yeah. the case, right? No, I mean, it's I mean, just, it's kind of, a, it's when you give the line producer a bump up. Oh, okay, uh, a little, okay. Yeah, gotcha. and then associate producer is, you don't see that much. But a lot of a lot of assistants get associate producer credits oh, that have sure, deals with sure. with companies just that make the movies yeah. or directors mm. assistants or producers oh, that makes assistants. Sense. So that's it. But usually, you know, when you see, I mean, it, it's very hard to now because now also there's indie and Hollywood have merged so much. So yeah. it's really hard. Only the people that worked on the movie will know who actually produced it. I, I'd love to. It sounds like you specifically really. I, if you, I'm, I'm assuming you enjoy it, obviously, but. You're very good at line producing. That really has been your thing for the longest time, right? Is that is that an area you want to keep exploring, or do you feel like other departments that like or other roles? Yeah, I like. I mean, I like being on set. Yeah. So a lot of it is line producing, and then. But what I do also like a lot is supervising other line producers. Sure, supervising. And then not being on set. Right. So I like both. Just the. I. I, I think it's. It's it's similar to doing documentaries and narrative. It's a good yin and yang, you know. Because oh, okay. when when you're not on set, you miss being on set. But then yeah. when you're on set, you just want to get the hell out of there. But it's, you wouldn't dare dabble in like being a first AD or anything like oh, that. Oh no, I'd never do that. <laughs> you wouldn't kill yourself there. No, I can't like get, pick up a two packet a day cigarette. <laughs> first AD. Well, that's the habit you'd pick that, up. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's actually the hardest job on a film set. Yeah, yeah. every yeah. time you yeah. see first them, AD. they're they're the most stressed out people. It's the hardest job. Life on a expectancy film. is going down by the minute yeah, honestly, like just honestly. it's the same as being a helicopter pilot in vietnam <laughs> oh god shout out, <laughs> shout out to our ad's i mean austin and, and i have ad yeah. for our sets it's before very, just but it's a shout out to the ad's people like francis robert people who were really like helped us out um not jealous awesome. of that of those jobs <laughs> but yeah. but even then you've learned to have empathy for them right you've learned to have sympathy no, and i like, always with, with ad's and dps i tend to become good friends you know because yeah. you're there you spend so much time on set with them True, and you understand yeah. it it's it's a very – and ADs, the majority of them wind up becoming producers because yeah, they know sure. they know the flow so well, yeah. you know, and they – Yeah. And, or directors, you know. Right, right. I think yeah, now yeah. lately it's – that's the – it's good because there, there's there's always trends in, in film and lately it's stunt coordinators getting directing yeah. opportunities, yeah, which yeah. is we great. Yeah, we just talked about that recently. But, uh, but first ADs, that's – I've never understood why – because honestly, if, if you default to an, on a set, mm -hmm. who, if something happens to the director, 
the first AD should always take over a movie because mm -hmm. there's no person more yeah. intimately and creatively involved sure. that also interacts with actors because DPs don't interact with right. actors. Yeah, right, right. Ideally, like, do, DPs are just, you know, not just, but I'm, but they're concentrated yeah. on the, you're, you're focusing on on the, the lighting, lighting and photography. And the, yeah. I, and I, I've always I've always said this. I always kind of preach uh, this factor, at least what I've experienced from both producing and directing. Um, it's all problem solving. So yeah. directing is creative problem solving to a certain degree, well, mostly, and producing is logistical problem and, solving. And AD, AD is everything problem right. solving. And right. the ADs have it really tough because ADs have to deal with the director and the actors sure. yeah. and the producers. It's right, an impossible right. job being an AD. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Like yeah. being an AD is like being the mayor of New York or LA. They're, wow. they're just jobs that you're never going Those to win. Even when you win, you lose. It's, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're very hard jobs. Yeah, they're meant to keep everybody happy. That's you're, you're, impossible. You're, you're, it's insane. Now, I, I have to ask, when it comes to, to <clears throat> the, the in terms of the risk when it comes to being a producer, because a, a director will run the risk of the movie sucking and, and therefore you just wasted everybody's time and money, right? But a producer... <laughs> is almost dealing with that immediately. You get a more immediate response. You're you're over budget, you're over time, you're under budget. You know, what's been your response to that or what's been your experience with like uh yeah, I got to I got to have my shit straight before I even, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean you just have to be honest with people and it, 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 it a lot of times it doesn't go well. You yeah, know? yeah, and it's it's hard, it's tough, yeah. but you can't the the truth will always come out. So mm -hmm. it's you it's it's much better to be to be faster with yeah. Um, with divulging the, what the Put real laying it out. I mean, yeah, it's like uh, with the budget. <laughs> like, um, well, I mean, I don't know. We can't talk about the project too much, but uh, you putting together a line budget and saying, like, look, look at all these prices. These have to happen. This is the minimum cost of yeah. like, you know, what needs to be there. And it's, this is our ceiling, right? If yeah. you go a dollar over it's this, it's going to take from another department, or we're going to have to ask more from the finance. It's not a sugar coating kind of paper. It's right. very like it's yeah, very straightforward. Yeah, I mean that's that that's the good thing about it. when you start in like the, the with a project I'm working with Tower is you, I just gave them a basement number. This is the minimum that yeah. you need to make this. You know, yeah. Anything else that, that is provided to you is gravy. Right. But right. but they, that's pro this is probably the number that will be provided to you. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, but, but on, and also yeah. the flip side is that you can't go over. Mm -hmm. You know, because people, they're not uh, one thing is a create is creative encouragement and another thing is business. You know, like what, the, what's like the, the great yeah, Jay Moore yeah. said in Jerry Maguire, it's not show friends, it's show business. Right. Mm -hmm. What's so. something that you've experienced in there? Because I've noticed yeah, I've noticed you obviously we've we've become friends over here and we've obviously you would develop a rapport with with who you can, but you're right, it is show business. And in that regard, uh what's the experience you've had with for instance a, a director who's on this first big budget uh picture mm -hmm. and and it seems like you're very calm in those situations. It's, and it's, it, it, it doesn't change anything on your end. You just hope this guy's experienced enough to be able to carry yeah. the set. But you, you directly have to deal with that. Like, yeah, we, I mean, you, you just the, it's, it's, <clears throat> at, at that point, most directors are very aware. They're, they, they they'll want to know what, what how the budget's doing, and they're there. There's okay. a reason they get to a point where they get. Sure, you know, there sure. there's there's so it's not you know at some point it's not a fifty thousand. Sorry. There it's not go. a fifty thousand dollar short film. You know, sure, for sure. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and you know, most directors that that the, the overwhelming majority want to direct something else. And, right. And the right, next right. thing they want to direct, <laughs> they they Probably desire a bigger, a bigger budget. budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. um, so I yeah, it's not. It's because just a, a lot of times it's not. There's there's no way of controlling many things. Yeah, there's nice. there's many moving parts in a movie. So Have the, you, the majority of sorry of the bad things that happen. A lot of times are out of anybody's control. Okay, I was gonna yeah. ask: uh, Have you experienced, like, I guess, projects where you just know that they're not gonna play ball with you, as far as like you telling them this is just not gonna happen, and you could see that the project's gonna go south? Or oh yeah, all the time. Again, <laughs> yeah. they they won't remain nameless, but you, all all you do that's a great thing about email is you email the important people, CC mm. who has to be CC'd, and then sure, it's very frustrating. People don't don't always listen to right. anybody, and it's just not just me. I sometimes <laughs> don't listen to people I should listen to. You know? <laughs> what are like the that's red the, flags to look out for? I guess yeah, when when they're not, for example, when you're when you're when you're explaining certain things, certain hard cost numbers mm -hmm. and and whoever it is refuses to accept them you know mm -hmm. so so that's but your yeah. biggest pushback that you yeah, get when, or, and that could be from either creative or from the studio or, saying or like, anybody yeah, or, or yeah. the producer my boss or mm -hmm. you know or the pa or whatever yeah. there there's a million different yeah. possibilities but you just you know you learn to i mean you learn to let things slide and and, and uh, 
yeah, you can't, it's hard when somebody refuses to believe you when, we're, when it comes to a number mm -hmm. that you know exists <laughs> and won't be, you know, is it replicable or yeah. cheaper? Then there isn't much you can do, man. You just smile and then I, keep I, I'd it love moving. to ask now in that regard. <laughs> I understand that no matter no matter the era, no matter the situation, no matter the film, whoever's financing is going to want to save a buck no matter what. But I feel like for better or for worse, the streaming era is here to stay. And they come packing cash. I mean, they come funding creatives left and right. Not always. Not though. always. That's that's a, that's a that's kind of a that's kind of a mirage. They they come packing cash for massive directors right, and producers. Right. But then, but then the rest of us, we have to keep doing the indie thing. We have to thing. keep yeah, doing yeah. But do you feel and they're, like they're exactly the same as other studios? They're, right. That's what that was my question. As, like, is it? No, they're it's the exact it's the same, same thing. The execs they hired used to work at other studios. <laughs> right. It's not. They're not hiring. Right. You know somebody that came from a different industry. So you don't feel like, I mean, in terms of consumption and distribution, that's what's really changed. But the actual filmmaking side of it, you don't feel like that side has changed? Not at really? all. No, wow. no, because okay. the, 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 no, you're, if you're Scorsese, sure, you can. <laughs> and then right. Paramount says, I won't give you $300 million. But Apple and then he says, yeah, yeah, Apple will. But that's, I think <laughs> right. there's one person in the world that can do that. For sure. him, it makes a huge difference. Sure, but sure. Right. but every, every other director, it's the same thing. If it's a, you know, if you're with a stream or a studio or an indie financier, if they tell you you have a million dollars, you have a million dollars. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to always, a, a budget is, it, uh, everybody has to understand, in the, especially in the lower budget independent film space, that yeah. there's a reason a budget exists. It's because sure. th that's the amount of money that can be provided to you. Now, now what's the situation when you work on things like, for instance, uh, <laughs> just on your, on, your, on your credits, something like Tesla, that you know is going to come with a decent budget, it's going to come with mm -hmm. a big star, um, yeah. and, and you're going to be dealing with kind of top tier people, both on producing and, and creative side. Does that change the formula for you? I mean, no, Tesla was an indie movie, and I was only on that for reshoots. Oh, okay. So okay, I was okay. only on that for two days. It was amazing. That was another brilliant director, Michael Almereda. I don't know if you've seen his movies. He's a genius. What is he? Excellent what else director. Did you do? He's done a bunch of uh, Marjorie Prim. What was that movie's name? And he's done a bunch of really, really okay. good movies. Uh, but uh, that one, I think it was it was funded by Momentum, if memory serves mm. me right. Okay. And I, it was they were very strict on the budget. Well, you, and you've worked with Ethan on a couple a couple of times. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he he right? wasn't on set though on that one. Oh, I okay. wish I because uh, it was second I, unit. I had crossed paths. Yeah. Gotcha, oh. gotcha, gotcha. But it's it's not. I mean, st streaming is the, and yeah. Everybody thinks what you just said. It's, but it's the 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 lower budgets. It's the exact same thing. And that's what yeah. I'm hoping to like shatter for people is that it the yeah. the, the sauce is made. In similar ways, the process of making the sauce, whoever's making the sauce and adds whatever ingredients they want to, that's different. But the actual process of making the sausage is, is really on the low budget tier to, to, to features. I mean, you just have better resources. Right? I mean, yeah. And you always have to, I mean, that's also, you know, and then when you can come in as a producer, line yeah. producer, whatever, any physical production person, if you can, if you, you work with somebody and you come in on budget or close to budget sure. or under budget or a little over budget, then that producer will then recommend you to somebody else, yeah. you know? And then there's times where I haven't come in on budget and they hate me. It's just, yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. not. It's, but it's the same it, situation as yeah. anybody else, right? Yeah. They like your work on one project. They yeah. don't like your work on, the, on another. Uh, yeah, but I just did. It, it, and it's, the, I mean, the great thing about film and, and, and I think especially indie film, lower budget film is, is it's very versatile. It's very variable. Like you never mm -hmm. know, for example, I, I signed up for a movie in Lake Tahoe. I shot there last winter in November, December. 2022, mm -hmm. the producers, we didn't pay one location fee. And you're talking Lake Tahoe is one of the most expensive places, places in the world. We shot on what it used to be called Squaw Valley Palisades. Okay. One of the premier ski mountains in the world. We shot there five days on the slopes, lifts, 30 people going up and down. We but didn't no pay $1. Wow. They got it for free. We shot in, they got the hotel rooms for free, the local producers. They got so much stuff for free. So we made that movie for less than half a million dollars. So every producer and, was a hero on the, that set. And I mean, no, they helped me. And, you, know, I, I did, I, you know, I did a fine job, but they, I mean, the rock stars there were the local sure, producers because sure, sure. right. they got everything for free, you know? Right. But uh -huh. if you look at that movie at face value, if you don't, if you don't think, or if you don't know. Well, or is this something we can talk about publicly? Or what yeah, it's it? called Weak Layers. Okay. We yeah, a, very, a, very, a ski comedy directed by Katie Burrell. Yeah. Okay, uh, and uh, it's we had a 
the the great Scott Gaffney was our ski unit director, okay. and the great JT Holmes was our stunt coordinator. They're they're super well known in the ski world, both okay. of them. Wow. Like they did Warren Miller movies, and okay. and and JT will jump off a cliff and then parachute and do all kinds <laughs> of shit. Yeah. So they did, so those two guys did our ski unit, but okay. since they're rock stars in that field, mm -hmm. they know a bunch of pro skiers that'll that'll work for free. Yeah. And then since those guys are on it, the pro skiers will do backflips. Exactly. You know, sure. it was, it, yeah. when you see that movie, I mean, and I'll tell you how much it costs us to make it, uh -huh. but it's, but my point is that it's, that's the, that's the beautiful thing about film production yeah. that it's not, and it's hard. I mean, it's, it's, it, and, and it's tricky because explaining that to a potential financier yeah. who doesn't have an entertainment background that scares is the hell very movie. difficult, yeah. you know, but there's always the, the, the person, the, the, the individual that wound up financing it, one of the producers. He knew the scene. He lived in Tahoe. So and, but the producers have to be the guys that, for, for the most part, go to the studios, go to the to the meetings, go to the financier meetings and say, we have all of our bases covered. Your yeah. money's not going to go to waste. And by the way, that's that's a bullshit statement. Nobody knows what's going to happen in, with, but, when the film wraps. Exactly. But, yeah, yeah. But you, there, there has to be. Yeah. It's it's like being a lawyer. You know, it's like, yeah, it's going to be fine. Blah, blah. Yeah, but for example, that, that movie, if it uh, was a studio movie that we made for 500 grand, that would have been a $20 million studio movie wow. because of the insurance, the stunt doubles. But because the local like, producers yeah. were well connected. We, we, we shot scenes inside of a house. Uh -huh. So a house that was getting remodeled, uh, it, it was gutted. Yeah. So they built, they built a ramp inside the kitchen and, and one of the pro skiers would start on the ramp Boom, go nice. down, and then they the, it, it, the the house was gutted, right? So yeah, there, yeah. there weren't any windows, so just, and then and then would it would stop at the window, and then we would cut our actress would then fly out wow. of the window yeah. into a jacuzzi. Jeez, like just that scene in a Hollywood movie would be yeah. millions of dollars, and yeah. and it's also like. Uh, an insurance liability producers yeah, yeah, yeah. are losing their heads. No, like, well, the insurance cost is the is the kicker. It would right. be you know it's hundreds of thousands of dollars of insurance premiums every day. Yeah, yeah. But, but that that but that's you know that's the bigger the name, the bigger the premiums. All yeah, this shit, right. I mean, but again, but that's the great thing about independent yeah. film. And in the like, I've done the crazy. I mean, I've shot mostly in the U.S., but I've also shot in in Mexico and Europe. By far, the craziest things I've done on on a camera have been in the U.S. Oh, oh wow, you know? really? Yeah, because you can get you can get for the again Tahoe pro skiers. You so. Know? What, but it just just because I'm hearing you like geek out about these oh, these types of situations. I mean, you, by the way, you're preaching to the indie choir. The way we can when we yeah. can make it work, we're gonna fucking make it yeah, work exactly. and get the shot right. But this is gold. All loops are is, is in that in that case is your like your desire to work with indie guys or guys that came from the indie world. Guys like Robert Rodriguez, Linklater, Kevin Smith, who like take those risks because they know that you know sneak around a shot or steal a shot from here, do this from there. Does that? Is that something that like like brings you back to these indie days and kind of keeps you? Yeah, in that, well, like, that, I mean that's that's very normal in New York. That's oh, a great thing okay. because stealing it, shots. I mean, because in, in New York you don't need if you don't put a, the camera if you don't put a tripod on the ground you don't need a permit. <laughs> oh, and, and if you don't block traffic, it's like that yeah, in a lot of places. That's why there's so much production in New York. Yeah, that's yeah. why it's because you just need a three hundred dollar permit and insurance. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think to answer your question, yeah, it's just it's it's the story and it's it's the whole vibe. You know, yeah. when you have a director that's a director that knows what he, she, they are doing. What and, the risk they and, can and, take and know it's exactly, going to pay off. Yeah. Because yeah. on that one, for example, you know, we had people doing backflips. <clears throat> yeah. But again, the the ski unit uh, the ski unit boss was Scott Gaffney. Who you, you, you make a trust. Yes, yeah. Right. yeah. And you do not have to. And then, and then JT Holmes, which, you know, you, if you see him, he the, the stuff he does on camera is insane. <laughs> they were super. We, we didn't have one injury on that movie. Wow. Wow. That was nuts. We had like 30 pro skiers. Wow. Yeah, and, that's what they do. and half of them doing backflips. That's wow. what they do. <laughs> so I, I want to get into a couple more things, um, Javier, because we've taken too much of your time, man. So so thank okay. you. But uh, I want to get into a couple more things. Too. The, one of the things is um, the, the the film festival scene that you've been you've been a part of, that you've kind of oh, told yeah. us. You've gotten back from Sundance. You've done the festival stuff. Um, and what's that as a producer um, – that's kind of, I mean, for everybody, right? Everybody's worked on the film. That's a huge payoff, either a premiere, how it's doing in the box office, how it's doing in streaming. But when you see it at a major festival, which you've been to Sundance more than a few times, right? And you've gotten that experience. Can you tell us a little bit about, for the indie filmmakers out there, that's their that's their bread and butter, right? I mean, to be able to premiere a film or show a film at a big festival is, is massive. And 
albeit the 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 cliche is kind of weird, right? Everybody thinks their life will change after that. But it's certainly the case. The, 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 but the, tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah. The the great thing is that it's basically a prize. It's a present for the crew, mm -hmm. and, right. and that's great because the and the the most the most appreciative of all people to the crew are the directors because they'll yeah. they because you know one thing production is very I always say production is a contact sport. It's very hard. Mm -hmm. You know, physical production. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's like construction, yeah. like working a kitchen. Yeah. It's very hard. It's very physical. It's very visceral. Very sweaty. A lot of times, Emotional, close, close yeah. compartments. And then directors, when they step back and they edit the movie, they start remember. They see a scene. They say, "Oh, this guy was props. This yeah, guy yeah, did yeah. that. This guy was that." So they become super appreciative. And then when everybody gathers to celebrate the movie at a film festival, it is really a great prize. It's a great experience. Sure. You know, uh, it's it's it, it really is. It's it's. It's a great way to, uh, to, uh, to like, you know, to, to put a bow on the present. Yeah. And yeah. it's also an uh, accolades or currency, right? Hey, we shot, we showed this film at yeah. Sundance and yeah. distribution. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, sales agents and produ I mean, they're there. They're there. Yeah. The, the, the first time I went to Sundance was with Haley, a Mexican movie that we made for $70,000. Wow. And we shot in Mexico City in a real life morgue. Oh, wow. Which, talk about doing insane things. Oh, real life was, morgue? And it was operating. We had to oh, cut when gosh. they would bring in cadavers. Yeah. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, how, how, does that, how, how does that work with like uh, for a producer like who it's you Mexico to, City? What do you think? Very like the, the bodies. <laughs> we don't know. You, we agree. We, we you can't show faces. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Nothing. Yeah. I know, but it was we were in a morgue for twelve hours. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. And then I think it's formaldehyde. I don't know if you've gotten a, a smell of that. Oh, yeah, personal. It's yeah. pretty brutal. Wow. Well, my question Man. is, do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. But that's, not, uh, <laughs> that's besides the no, point. No, no ghost will mess up your smell like uh, 12 Ooh. hours in a morgue. Will. Right, right. Yeah, uh, it's, it's great. I mean, yeah, and, and, all, and all festivals are good. I just think if you... If you can't fall into the trap where you think that you're going to go to a festival and it'll change your yeah. career, you know, you I, I, I mean, it, even like uh, with other festivals, they recommend just using it as a way to like network and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Honestly, you know, yeah, 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 or, or whatever. I mean, but, but that's because indie guys, guys like us, um, come and and listen to the stories of like the Tarantinos and the Rodriguez's and and the Kevin Smiths that sold clerks at Sundance or on the fucking napkin in one of the restaurants. I mean, yeah, you hear these stories, and but it, we're not really in that world anymore. Yeah, I mean. that does. The, the thing is just keep working yeah. you know you just have to keep going yeah. keep yeah. going keep going you know so, if you see a lot of if you're you know if you if you're an aspiring director the overwhelming majority of directors their first movie is not as good as their third or fourth movie I say and there's a reason time. and there's a reason for that because really it's like it's the only profession well there's a lot of professions but in film it's very hard because it's costs a lot of money to make a movie so mm -hmm. yeah. as a director you can only really make a movie when you have a lot of money so very few people have a lot of money all the time right I, so you I, have to wait every couple of years if it goes well yeah. to direct a movie and it's just you have to keep working you have I, to and keep I, I couldn't agree more and I the, the what I what I use on um, uh, as uh, I, what I preach is basically uh, Rodriguez's advice on that like in his head, right? He's being facetious as a number, but you have 10 bad movies in you. The sooner you get them out, the better of a filmmaker that's, you're yeah, going to be. That's good right? advice. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it really is true. I mean, we've seen it on our own work and yeah. and we didn't even have to see anything. We're just horse blinders, right? We're working, we're working, yeah, working. Yeah. And other people's like, man, I've seen the progression of your films. That's the best thing you can hear yeah. <laughs> as an indie yeah. filmmaker. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, okay, this is doing something. It's it's There's a, there's a result that's in the media see there. Um, I, I, I'd love to ask, um, kind of kind of getting closer to wrapping it up here, but... What's been your favorite experience as a producer? Just oh, throughout your whole career. Oh, well, ask him, like, fuck, I'm not, I'm not putting tape over your mouth. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, what's no, been... you got the order wrong. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, I've, I th there's been a lot. It's, you know, it's been Funny Pages was phenomenal. Yeah. The Owen Klein A24 movie. Right now, Week Later is the Lake Tahoe movie was a the fantastic movie. experience because you're realizing it's like across the universe where mm -hmm. I realized that never again in my life will be able to get paid to ski. But you know, that's, that's in that way we get into it, like uh, yeah. at, at the at the bases kid inside of us level. Yeah, you gotta have fun. Yeah, we got into this industry yeah. to really do what we love and have yeah. fun. So it yeah. sounds like on these sets that really impacted you. Yeah, you just had was, a fucking blast. That was like, amazing. And then I I did this this documentary called Second Chance. Premiered it's 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 a Showtime body. Premiered at Sundance two thousand twenty two mm. about Richard Davis, the gentleman that that. He invented the first mass-produced uh, uh, bulletproof vest. Oh! And it's this crazy Shakespearean story about his <laughs> downfall. But to sh when we were shooting, mm -hmm. we went to his compound. Where so this guy was selling so many vests mm -hmm. that he would that he would he made homemade videos, 
is promotional Excuse tools. Okay. So we had like, thousands of hours of footage that we could use in the documentary. So we went to the gun range where he would shoot his fake Rambo movies, right? Oh, wow. And now, but this is your talk, 40 years later, we're interviewing him. Uh, it's it's an excellent documentary. Ramin Bukhrani directed it. Okay. Adam Stone shot it. Jeff Nichols is DP. I don't okay. know if you've seen Mud. Did you see yeah, Mud? Yeah, Mud. One of the best McConaughey. indie movies ever made. Yeah. That DP shot it. Wow, and wow, you, wow. you say you're in Traverse City, Michigan mm. in December in 2020 in the height of COVID. Yeah. You know, and you're talking to to Richard Davis, which some people would classify him as whichever way they classify mm -hmm. him, but he's a very interested individual, you know? Sure, sure, sure. And you're just thinking, this is very cool, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, so yeah, it's been, you know, there's a ton of really good experiences. And the conversations you and I have about this stuff, to me, feels, and I, maybe people are getting this read too, um, like you're just getting started. That's what like, I'm seeing. Like, <laughs> hope so. All the best experiences have been lately, so it's yeah, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, no, no you yeah, told me, right, the past two years alone have been like, Awesome. Yeah, it's been it's been good, and we're you know hopefully you know trying to like what what I'm working on with Tower now we're getting close to a green light, yeah, which hopefully, hopefully we'll announce so. soon. So yeah, and it's good, man. A, a lot of talent in the Southwest. I'm line producing a, a feature in Las Cruces coming up in May. Nice. Las Cruces is hopping because it has an added tax incentive. Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, we keep trying to tell people that we keep trying yeah. to impress people down here yeah. and get people down here and say, "Hey, this, this something's happening here." Yeah. So, like, I think hard work moved, pays off. You moved here at the right at the right time, right? Right when the El Paso yeah. film boom is really gonna gonna start again. It's so, gonna, gonna. Um, the last thing I really I, I'd love to ask you. I know you guys have a couple questions just to wrap it up, but the last thing I'd love to ask you is. Um, if you could work with, you're a cinephile, I mean, the conversations that we've had uh, off camera and stuff is just, you love cinema, you love to consume cinema. Uh, if you could work with any director uh, or work on any project, what, what would it be? That's Past or present or future, yeah, like, I'd love know. to work with this guy or, or I would have loved, let me tell you why, because Elizabeth, Elizabeth Alley, yeah, when we had her on the show, uh -huh. uh, we had this, we had this whole tw 20, 30 minute conversation on Richard Linklater. Oh, yeah. Because they're friends. Yeah. And she would tell a story and it was, we got into it and, and then she says, she's like, Richard knows this. He's like, she, you can ask him. Wait, wait, uh, yeah. uh, fingers crossed we're going to have him on the podcast. But um, she's like, you can ask him, like. I, I, he knows very well, Robert knows that Robert Rodriguez knows very well that if there were one, one trilogy I could have produced, it would oh, have yeah. been the before trilogy. Yeah. She's like, like, I love that trilogy. I oh, wish really? I could have worked on that type of thing. So that's why I ask. I mean, we no, all have I that wish. The, for no, my, the, yeah, no, definitely the, you know, Joachim Trier, the Norwegian director, no, the guy directed really? Reprise. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Oslo 31, that guy, that's, I think he's that's just a master. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that would be your guy. That's like who you're. Yeah. Manifest it, man. This is yeah. This well, is he like Linklater. He does twenty-four hour movies where oh, it takes oh, place. Okay, okay. Oh, cool. cool. Now that movie man. Reprise, if you haven't seen it, it's it's a masterpiece. I, I haven't, but I've heard, I've heard of it. I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, me, just real quick question: How was it working? And it's Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> work with dog and is there going to be a second season i know it's been a long time i i do think i think slick the director i think he does have something going on the second season but uh <laughs> it was amazing it was another it was netflix but it was it was warner independent and netflix warner digital oh, oh. but it, we were still it was basically a low budget indie feature uh divided into 10 shorts right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was the dog part of it was very challenging because we had to have American Humane was on set. It's fine. There was no problem. We weren't. There were the dogs. Yeah. But it's but it's you know it's expensive getting them on set. Well, because and, they say, especially if you're starting out, quote unquote, as a director, don't work with animals or kids. Yeah, <laughs> I, but I hate repeating that since I have children. Oh well, yeah, yeah. But uh, but any but it is challenging working with dogs because the you can't. It's hard. You'll have the you have. There's a dog wrangler and the dog owners are, are there. Mm -hmm. But dogs, they're you know they're a, an no. organ. They're, they they sometimes they get tired, whatever. Yeah. But that was a lot of fun. It was all, all mostly all practical locations except for one day on a soundstage. Okay. And we just uh, mostly Bushwick and Ridgewood in Brooklyn. It was it was a lot of fun, but the dog, the, the Bruno, the Slicks dog was crazy. Like a, a great actor, <laughs> great actor. Awesome. And awesome. then the the guy that was on that who now blew up is Rob Morgan. He Ooh. plays Magic Johnson's dad on Winning Time. Oh, he's a he's, big deal they're, now. they're big Winning Time fans. Yeah. Show. Yeah. <laughs> well, Morgan was a, you know, this, I mean, we shot this, I think, five years ago, but he, yeah. you know, that was when, now Morgan's a, ma I mean, he's, a, he's, he's in he's, Avengers movies and anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was good. It was a great, that was a great New York indie experience. Was, Is there any chance? Yeah, I, 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 I haven't heard. I, I think somebody told me that Slick has a second season coming up, but you'd have to ask him. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Uh, 
I remember that when we first met you, uh, you were telling us about how you were uh, working on horror and how that paid the bills for a while. Did you horror. enjoy the horror genre producing those <laughs> that have its Even own challenge? Like, exactly. Really. I love genre stuff. Now. No, I, I, yeah, I love horror. And especially that if you talk about directors, yeah, working with horror directors are amazing. Like the <laughs> horror, horror directors, it's basically you're, you're working with a be it he, she, they, whatever yeah, the yeah. orientation. Yeah. They're they're basically college professors mm. of the horror genre. You know, <laughs> yeah, I've, right. never, I've never worked with a yeah. genre director yeah. that doesn't know everything about whatever genre yeah. it is. <laughs> like for example, uh, I did this movie Swallow, which is body horror. Mm -hmm. Carlo Mirabella Davis, and that guy, that guy, he knew everything about everything that it's had to do with so body weird. horror. It we have like our buddy Bennett. You, actually, you yeah. sit down and talk to the guy, and then you always learn something. And it yeah. was. Like, <laughs> And, and they're all very, you know, and, and especially when it's their first movie, when mm -hmm. you work with genre directors, it's taken them so long to get it funded, you mm -hmm. know, because it's such a struggle because it's easy, you know, when you've had genre hits, right? Then then yeah. everybody wants you to direct horror yeah. stuff. But you see the but care the first, they have for you, right? Exactly. You so the first one, they're like, that's another one of my favorite directors to work with, Carlo. He was the nicest person, a complete gentleman. Carlo great under stress and, and you know swallow did swallow that was a, an, another very interesting story because we shot it then it got distributed ifc oh did, did well but then covid hit and then we mm. went to vod it was one of the first movies that was out and ron howard and kevin smith saw it and nice. shouted us out on twitter nice and nice. then fast forward to the end of the year and almolovar and john waters put it on their best of the year wow. that's great by the way uh, just so everybody knows funny pages uh you got to Cool shout out from Edgar Wright on his Instagram. Oh, yes. Yeah. That out. Thank so, you, Edgar Wright. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Thank you very much. Ch check it out. Check it out. A24 is killing. They just won Oscars for best pictures. I mean, for best pictures. Oh, come on. Um, come on, people. So, this is your camera right here, Javier. What's advice you can give to, to an indie filmmaker, a and storyteller, no somebody that wants to come into it? Just, just do whatever you have to do to get on set and to make a movie. If It doesn't matter if you're a director, producer, production designer. If you can, these days, there's no excuse not to make anything. Yeah. You can you can make a movie with five hundred dollars. So <laughs> if, if 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 it's fine, five. like if you can, because you can lean into whatever you want to do. You can lean into film criticism, which doesn't require you to be on set. But there there used to be an excuse not to be on set, which mm -hmm. was the monetary barrier of entry that no longer exists. No longer you day. can you know people. You'd be very pleasantly surprised with how many people will help you for free, yeah. and and I'm talking locations, gear rentals once they see the enthusiasm that you put forth to actually put together a crew, you have a script actors, we can and getting, get, getting, <laughs> getting on set is much easier than you think. Yeah. You know, the hard part begins after, you know, then you have to actually edit the thing and get it out there. But physical production is not that hard if you really want to do it. So but, like, you know, speaking of Nike, just do it. Yeah, just a <laughs> bo bonus question. Have, have your have your kids shown interest in like what you do and what the what move the movie uh, magic making? You know, no, they ask, but the, the more I mean, what am I? They're seven and five, so the the seven year old is he reads books all the time. Yeah, okay, okay. and and the five year old is more into drawing. Okay, so, so if I could, if, creative if I could speculate, it might be the five year old. <laughs> okay, because he is he's, he is very visual. Okay, awesome, awesome. Cool, uh, well, you heard it here first. That do you have any advice for Austin over there? You've seen him produce more or less. Now you've you've gotten the taste for what Austin is doing. He's, he's a great producer. Javier, what do you what do you have for him? Austin, he should ditch his director in business. Oh! <laughs> hey, you said it. Not me. <laughs> you guys are gonna talk after this, aren't you? He was like, I thought of that. <laughs> now nah, Austin's good, man. He's gonna just keep working he's and trying to, trying to get on set as much as you can, which is what he's doing. Yeah, so beautiful. There's not much else, you know. There, this is it's not Disneyland. It doesn't it doesn't happen at the drop of a hat. You know, every, yeah. everybody reads and sees the stories, but at the end of the day it's like any any other profession where it takes a lot of you know for fear of regurgitating the malcolm gladwell thing the mm. twenty thousand or ten thousand or whatever how many hours uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you just have to do it for as long as you can you know and at right. some point you catch a lucky break and then you keep going i really yeah, i really don't true. have much more to say no no that's great cool, that's great uh javier i can't thank you enough man you've, you've given us tons of advice great stories from your being on set and and hopefully we uh we make those memories ourselves, right? The next time we're on set together, uh, which is hopefully very, very, very yeah, soon. Yeah, hopefully you're not on another podcast talking about the horror story that was <laughs> producing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Yeah, but by the way, uh, about that it broke the record of insurance claims. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, but thank you so much for being on the podcast, yeah, man. man. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna are writing all the all this stuff down, just trying to get uh, their foot through the door too. Who love producing, who love filmmaking. Yes. That's that's the whole point. We love filmmaking. We want to be good storytellers. And um, and we're getting there. So here we go. But uh, you heard it here on the Towercast podcast. Uh, we had the awesome Javier Gonzalez, uh, awesome producer. Yeah, yeah, it's good, my hand. Oh, thank you, man. Um, not only is he giving us awesome advice and is from here, but he's he's also helping us, you know, do do some shit on the real level. So, uh, oh, and la last thing I'll say is is um, especially for directors. Yeah. Did you guys see the Tim Blake Nelson movie Old Henry? That no, western. No, no. That's a great movie. It's an example of it's very visual. Okay. You know, so there's okay. very little dialogue. Mm -hmm. I like so, them like Nelson. So any too. any any directors you should you should see because th those movies are cheaper to make. You know, oh, the, okay, okay. the less dialogue and location you have, the the cheaper it is because you have less actors and and, and things moving around. <laughs> right. It's because you don't understand that when you start. Like any no, no, I, 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 cars, I, I, horses, anything <laughs> that moves very expensive. <laughs> More locations, very expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the if camera you have has to move with but it, but if that's you have expensive. but if you have one person walking somewhere. Very cheap, we, you know, we, and we there's an artistic way to, yeah. to, sh to shoot all that. Yeah, yeah. So everybody should see that movie, Old Henry. It's we, a we learned masterpiece. That the hard way. Yeah, and yeah. it's yeah, because nobody anything that moves dogs, <laughs> humans. Yeah. It's not just kids, yeah, yeah. Uh, horses, you know, cars, Everything. carriages. Airplanes, helicopters, yeah, very expensive. We make a joke with us, and like anytime we're getting ready for a prep, he's like, I, I don't see my helicopter on the cross sheet. Like, what, yeah. what's the helicopter day? Because my trigger, <laughs> you're not getting one. But I, yeah, but I hadn't seen a movie like that, and 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 a lot of people had recommended it to me, and just by chance, I know the first AC that worked on it. Oh, cool. And it's so seamlessly shot that I assume they had either a a steady cam or a dolly or a steady cam on a dolly. Uh -huh. And I asked the first AC, and he said it was a movie. But it's literally uh, masterful camera work. Every aspiring director or DP should see that movie. Nice. Oh, Old Henry, Old Tim Henry. Lake Lesson. Cool. Check, Nelson. It, out. Yeah. Check it out. Um, awesome, man. Like I said, this is, this is great advice. So thank you for it. And uh, and um, pay attention. If you're out there, you're listening. This is this is gold right here. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining us, Javier. And, and I'm sure we'll have you back at some point on the podcast talking about the next thing that we're working on or that yeah. you're working on because you're getting work left and right too, man. You come back and tell us some crew, some crew and cast stories from wherever you're at. Uh, but yeah, cool. But all right, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning into the Tower Cast podcast this episode. Uh, tune in. Uh, we're going to be doing, this is coming out I after. A uh, couple of weeks, we'll be doing the Las Cruces Festival. Yeah, we're going to be doing yeah. uh, Las Cruces International Film Festival. We're going to talk, they already announced some of the guests. We're going to talk to Giancarlo Esposito. We're going to talk to Anna Gunn. Oh, um, and Anna Gunn was in Land of Dreams. I line produced that movie. Oh, oh that's hey, 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 Land yeah. of Dreams. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. That movie. So you might you might even pop by while we're there. So. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, so yeah, so so tune in to the Las Cruces stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's we're going to we're going to talk to people who I actually can't announce yet, but they're great. I promise you. Uh, but but <clears throat> Giancarlo Esposito is being honored at the festival. We're going to go back and talk to some awesome also indie filmmakers that are not going to be there this year. So yeah. Um, so stay tuned for the Las, Las Cruces stuff cool. uh, if you haven't checked out the oscars episode go check it out we're doing the sight and sound poll this this coming soon as well the and movie. come and join us for Aaron and george's film cafe we're gonna we're, we do it once a month we're gonna do yeah. you probably already just saw the lost in translation episode but uh we're gonna cable be doing guy cable guy cable, cable guy. guy right oh yeah right for real ben, ben, for ben real? Stiller yeah. vehicle. it's his favorite film do you like it do you love yeah. it oh, hell yeah dude yeah <laughs> see all the haters out there <laughs> it's a beautiful it's a just he's a you know he directed reality bites right ben reality Stiller? bites oh yeah 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 bites, uh, nobody knew that ben still i, I love the, the secret life of walter mitty man that that oh, film oh, for yeah. me he's an excellent director. director he's an excellent director and uh, tropic thunder by the way I mean, <laughs> yeah and not forget about jim carrey that was main guy yeah. <laughs> uh no but yeah we got a lot of stuff coming up on the podcast stay tuned um, if you don't hear from us, something's going on. We're, we're heavy in development, man. We're doing a ton of stuff on the production lots, side, lots. on the script writing side, on the just just bear with us. We're not skipping the podcast when we want to. We just get busy. And, and unfortunately, we have to put a backseat on the podcast. But just stay tuned for the awesome stuff coming up. And we actually have some more guests lined up. We're going to do some remote setups. People are going to be calling. It's going to be really cool. So just stay tuned. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning into the Towercast podcast. Uh, keep making films. We love you guys. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned. Take care, everybody. Love you guys.